Hello Canadian gardeners, cold climate gardeners, and gardeners of the extremes. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, we take that science and we apply it to gardening and plant care. So if you like the sounds up, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and let me know in the comments what zone you're from because it helps me engineer my videos better suited to you, my audience. If you are returning, thank you so, so, so much for coming back. You obviously haven't gotten sick of me yet. And today I have one of your all time favorites, a garden hack. So let's get into it. In today's video, we are going to be talking about vinegar and just vinegar in the garden in general. Particular hacks I see this for is decreasing the pH of the soil for things like blueberries, roses, hydrangeas. And the second thing is using it for killing weeds. So we're going to be going through a both of those hacks and deciding whether or not it is valid. Using science, of course. Vinegar, what exactly is it? Well, it's 5% acetic acid, and that is kind of where both the pH and the weed control come together to make the garden hack viable, sort of. Now, while acetic acid is an acid, meaning it has a pH lower than seven, when it's applied to the soil, it doesn't do much of anything because it would have to be a continuous source to be able to lower the pH. Now, if you use vinegar to lower the pH initially of the soil, you will momentarily reduce it, but the moment it rains, you water, or it starts moving its way through the soil profile, the pH will return to its natural state, which is whatever organic material or substrate is surrounding it. So if you are having issues with pH in your soil, let me know in the comments below and I can do a video on that. But general recommendation, if you are trying to get more of an acidic soil because you have a soil that is higher, like more towards the alkaline side, or is around a seven and you're aiming for something lower because you do have things like blueberries, hydrangeas, etc., and so forth. Um, the biggest, simplest hack I can give you right off the bat is peat moss because peat moss has a lower pH than the natural soil around it. Um, if you want more of the science on soil pH and exactly what uh, dictates it and how to alter it, then again, let me know in the comments below and I can do a video for you on that. But if you're wondering about peat moss and its general property, check out my peat moss video. So in simple terms, is vinegar a solution to pH that is permanent and going to last the whole season for growing your blueberries? No, it is not. Just simple fact, as it works its way through the profile, as you water, as it rains, the pH will go back to whatever the normal substrate around it is. Now, the second thing is, of course, the idea that it can be used for weed killer. And while this is not wrong, it does kill the upper biomass of any plant it touches. That is part of the problem. It is not a broadleaf pesticide and it is not a monocot pesticide. It is a whole kit and caboodle pesticide. And the reason for that is because it actually burns the mucous membrane of any plant or any living thing it touches. And the reason for this is when you take a thing of vinegar and you smell it, that burning sensation you get, eye watering that you get from that is essentially the mucous membrane and both your nose or your eyes beginning to dry out. And that is the same thing it does to plants, but also things like frogs and fish and toads. So if you have a pond, do not apply vinegar anywhere near your pond because you will harm any wildlife um, that you have in there, especially if you have aquatic amphibian type animals in and near and around your pond. But does it work? Yes, it will kill foliage. However, it will never kill the roots of your plant. And the simple reason for that is because it can't get low enough. So while it will kill your petunias, and probably wipe them off the map for the rest of the summer, it's not going to take out your dandelion permanently and your dandelion will just regrow from its roots, which is what happens in the case of most weeds. So is it effective? No. Will it show signs that it worked? Absolutely yes, but as for root 
destruction, it will not. And if your weed can come back from its roots, then you can be sure to see it again in a short little while. So while we're on the topic of herbicides and the fact that vinegar kind of sort of works, but not really, and some of the dangers behind it, I thought it would be a great time to maybe insert a little bit of information about herbicides since this is a science-based channel. If you guys do not know, I did a interview live talk with Masilla from Learn to Grow on Instagram TV. It was really, really fun, but the topic came up about herbicides, natural preventatives versus conventional preventatives. And I actually worked in the pesticide research and development side of the world in agriculture. And one of the big things that we did with research and development was actually trying to decide if something was viable for the market or not. And herbicide companies have to go through a lot of rigorous testing, especially in Canada. I'm not totally sure with the FDA what goes on there, but I'm assuming it's something along the same line. For agriculture and agri-foods Canada, you have to be able to prove that your herbicide is only present in the trophic levels for 72 hours after application. So that means it can only be present in the environment to be consumed by bugs, birds, animals in general for 72 hours. That includes the soil and both the plant foliage itself. So if you are worried about herbicides um, being put on your lawn and effects that it will have on your cats and your dogs, the best recommendation I can give you without doing a whole video on herbicides is that you should wait 72 hours and I'm sure that fertilizer companies or herbicide companies that do your lawn and garden work will say the same thing and the reason for that is because that is a government mandated must have when you are designing any sort of pesticide or herbicide on the face of the planet. That is just a fun fact when it comes to herbicides and how they work. Vinegar does not have FDA approval or Agriculture and Agri-Foods Canada approval as a pesticide. However, do I think it lasts in the environment for over 72 hours? No, probably not. And if it does, it's probably heavily diluted by the time 72 hours is up, especially if it rains or the, you water your plants, etc., and so forth. So do I think it's an effective mechanism for lowering your pH? Absolutely not. Do I think it's an effective mechanism for eliminating weeds? temporarily kind of sorta will not fully remove your weeds whatsoever do i think it can do harm to your garden absolutely if it is applied to your plant it is not selective in what it kills it kills everything so i hope this helped you guys out if you enjoyed this video be sure to give this video a thumbs up let me know in the comments below if you use vinegar in your garden and how effective you found it and check out the rest of my plant hack series. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.